Okay, so we're talking about Wakanda today. We're going to be working with WebSockets. I'll be going through some information, uh, building a real-time communication server with Wakanda. We'll be looking at both the server side and the client side. And this is meant as an introduction to WebSockets if you've not uh, utilized them before. And I'll be giving you some resources for some more advanced examples as well. Uh, my name is Greg McCarville. I'm the director of Wakanda Business Development. Uh, if you've seen previous webinars, you're probably, uh, we've met uh, virtually anyhow in the past. And uh, definitely feel free to contact me. My role here uh, with Wakanda is to uh, really motivate use of the product and, um, and to inspire people to uh, take, their, take their knowledge to the next level. So this will get you going. Uh, there's a lot of resources that we provide and, and I'll be going through those at the same time. So I've got a fairly loose agenda. As usual, our webinars are quite casual in nature. It's more along the lines of if I were sitting uh, next to you at, uh, at your desk, uh, giving you an overview of, of WebSockets, that's how we'll, we'll be approaching this. So I'll do a first one thing that we did discover is we found out a lot of new people are coming to these webinars, which is a great thing. Uh, so I'll do a quick overview of what Wakanda is. And I will say up front, this is not really a beginner's webinar. I'm going to give you a link to uh, the one we did last month, which was meant to give people a nice overview of what we're doing, the goals of the of the product, and these types of things. So I'll give you that. This one today will be a lot of code, so if you're brand new to JavaScript, hang on, uh, get your feet wet, and come back to it. I think you'll get a lot of good information out of it. So I'm going to do an overview of web WebSockets, uh, kind of what they are, what their uh, best use cases are. They're definitely a technology with a lot of momentum. You see many products out there right now, both cloud and uh, libraries, that uh, their main marketing feature is WebSockets. So it's definitely a topic that people have interest in, your clients will have interest, uh, interest in, and maybe will help you bring your, your software offerings to a more competitive level where you can win out a deal over someone else. So. Uh, We'll then go through, I'm going to do a live coding example using WebSockets. Uh, I'll be totally upfront with you. It's pretty involved and uh, with that and live coding there may be hiccups so you may also get the opportunity to see some live debugging. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> we'll do a review of uh, a, an example that we have that's sort of the next step beyond what I'm going to show you. Uh, we've got it in our documentation page. I'm going to open that project up and just sort of point you through uh, the highlights of that example because it, it takes uh, it to the next level in particular with its use of JavaScript and, and uh, proper encapsulation and a lot of different things. Then I'll, I'll go through one slide just sort of explaining you know what you might investigate for more advanced Im implementations or uh, higher, uh, higher volume implementations. And then we'll go into a live question and answer, which we always do. Uh, I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll answer what I can today, and definitely we'll give you an email address for any follow-up questions uh, that you're more than welcome to get in contact with us. So first off, what is Wakanda? That's just a two-minute tour. Uh, there's really a few major components. The main developer tool that we offer, it is free, uh, is Wakanda Studio. Uh, it's a full-featured IDE. You can do everything from develop your user interface with our full widget set, uh, right down to managing the server, starting and stopping the server. Uh, there is also uh, on the horizon mechanisms for deployment, but we've got version control. We have, it's a full uh, code and text editor. So it's really an all encompassing tool with uh, both a visual that can suit both a visual designers or, or visual developers preferences as well as someone who's strictly into code. So it's a great IDE. We recommend you give it a try. Of course, with Wakanda, it's all standards, standard files, so you can use whatever IDE you prefer. This is something that we offer. The other major component is the Wakanda server. Uh, some basic characteristics. It's a multi-threaded uh, JavaScript on the server side uh, implementation. So we've got uh, a very nicely coupled database we call it a data store, so it's an object relational data store. We've got an industrial-grade web server, and we've got a, a, a very fast JavaScript 
uh, engine all on the server side, a very familiar API, pretty much all JavaScript, so it's very easy to use, simple to deploy, and very performant. Uh, so with that multi-threaded environment, you can utilize multi-core servers out of the box. It's vertically scalable uh, right away, so it's not uh, you know similar to Node. You're, you're not struggling with uh, fully utilizing larger servers. There's a huge API included. We have a ton of documentation, so you're not always importing a module immediately. There's a pretty much everything you need to put together a substantial web application is built right into the product. It's there, ready for you to use immediately. You can certainly extend it with common JS modules. And uh, again, I said it's a very tightly integrated environment, but we really care about web standards, and we've made sure that we're working with web standards wherever possible. As far as deployment, very easy to deploy on your own hardware. Uh, we've put it up on multiple different uh, virtual private server providers, whether it's Amazon, uh, we actually have a uh, an EC2, uh, I forget what they call them, but they're, they're containers, so we have it available directly on AWS, but you can deploy it yourself on EC2, I put it on DigitalOcean, Linode, you name it. So as far as um, deployment, we can deploy on Mac, Windows, or Linux. And coming soon we've got Wakanda Cloud, which is going to be a one-click deploy from Studio, and that will be very exciting. We're in internal beta with that right now. So what are the goals of the product? Essentially we want to make building advanced business web applications more accessible. Uh, we want to em empower experienced developers to give them a more concise technology stack. So if you're if you're newer to building web applications we want to make it more accessible and if you're an experienced web application developer we want to make your technology stack uh, less complicated and, and more robust. We also want to provide a cross-platform development tool, so if you're building for desktop, browsers, mobile, or even native applications, we care about uh, getting your data across all of these different platforms with one tool. And we want to enable businesses to control their own back end. There's a lot of trends right now with cloud deployment. You get things like parse.com, uh, there's a multitude of them, is we want to take that ease of use, is what they're famous for, and bring it home, allow you to put it on your own hardware, and own your data securely again. As I mentioned, today's webinar is not going to be geared towards uh, someone who's brand new to our product. It's one specific topic. It's more of a training webinar. But if you want to see a nice overview, last month we did uh, you can see it on our website through the webinars link, but it was an all-in-one, uh, all-encompassing webinar going through everything that Wakanda can offer you in a, in a way that's digestible by a new person. So I'd recommend you go take a look at that webinar. It was, uh, it's, was done pretty recently. So let's do a quick overview of WebSockets. Uh, basically, there's two components to a WebSocket uh, system. You have a server-side and you have a client side. So on the server you set up a WebSocket server and you can have one or many clients connecting to the server and it's a real-time uh, type of interaction. So we can push information uh, in, in our example we're going to be pushing JSON data back and forth. So the server can initiate a push and publish to one or many clients and likewise, clients can push messages back to the server, which can be processed, distributed, uh, or whatever makes sense in your case. Uh, like I said, today is going to be uh, a beginner level uh, demonstration to get you from 0 to 50, and then you can take it from there. Uh, Wakanda server, incidentally, can be both uh, a WebSocket server as well as a client. So if you have other WebSocket implementations, uh, living on the web or on your network, Wakanda server can act as a client and in interact with your existing systems that way. Of course, it can also be a WebSocket server, which we'll be demoing today. So on the client side, some events that you'll see, I'm not sure that I'll demonstrate all of these, but WebSockets have different events. And you have on open, on close, and this is when the socket is opened or closed, so you can actually track uh, a client's uh, uh, 
presence, whether they're uh, on, connected, active, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's an on message, which anytime you publish a message to that client will be uh, executed, and then there's on error as well. Actually, this is, uh, so we've got functions as well. To send um, a message from the client, it's just your websocket.send. You can close the socket as well with a dot .close. Server side, I'm going to be showing you on connect, on message, and there's also on close and on error, and then the functions I'll be showing you post message. Now one thing I should say is that this is not everything that can be done. This is the level that I'll be covering today. So we're going to go into a live demo, and I'm going to start right from scratch. So I've got, uh, I'm going to create a new solution in Wakanda Studio. And I'll post this to GitHub when we're done. And we'll create a Git repository and a new project in that solution. We're going to build a pretty basic chat interface. Depending on the time and how far I get, I may go into also working with uh, some data in the data store. We'll just start with a general interface so you can get an idea where I'm going with things. So we've built a, in our index page, we're not going to do any logins or authentication. We're just going to go ahead and uh, pull in a container and I'll size this. Actually, I'll take the page first and I'll go, I'm going to do some sizing on this block. So we'll have it grow uh, vertically and stick to the left side and we'll add some text for a title. So this is uh, chat title, and we'll just put in uh, team chat. We'll make it bold. Okay, then we'll take a text widget. So this is just a block of text. We'll size that down. Uh, we'll call that chat text is the ID. Um, We'll make it rich text so that I can put bold and, and different styles in there. And we'll also size this to grow with its parent container. And I'll give it a border as well so we can see it a little better. And make it one pixel. So this is where all of the contents of our chat, all messages will, will uh, be contained and we'll just make a small interface here for adding a new message. So we'll put a text input, change the label to message, size it a bit, and we'll do a button to allow us to send that message. And I'm going to do some, just make sure it looks pretty decent. So I'll anchor this button to the right bottom of its parent container. And I'll do the anchor the uh, input here to the bottom. So that's going to make it so that you can size the window to whatever you want. And it will still look half decent. Last thing I'll do as far as interface is we'll just put a text input up here. We're going to let people choose their username. So we'll give that an idea of username input, username, and then we'll give it a button where someone can change their username. We'll do modify. So I always find it important to put uh, sensible IDs in. Makes it easier when you're coding later down the road. I think I need to do that here as well. So this will be message input, and I think we're all set to go. So that's as far as I'm gonna, going to go with uh, interface today. Pretty basic. From here on out, it's going to be code. Um, <clears throat> unless we get into, I do really well and we have extra time. So let's do the first thing that we need to do to get a WebSocket going. Um, first thing, this it's actually similar to working with uh, HTTP requests. We're going to set up a handler. So we're going to make a new server-side JavaScript file. 
I'll just call it my bootstrap. You'll see it'll come up here. I'll right click and I'm going to set this as active bootstrap. So that sets it to run uh, upon server startup. So you'll see me start and stop the server a number of times during this uh, demonstration uh, because we're working really at the root level here. So we want to go, uh, so we start with HTTP server and add web socket, not socket, socket handler. And this takes a few arguments. The first one is the path. This can be a regular expression. Uh, I'll just put in that string chat. Uh, then you specify when you create a new uh, web socket, it actually sets up a, uh, a worker. So there's a whole topic that probably could have its own webinar, which is web workers. Uh, so each socket is a, a worker. So we're going to specify the worker JavaScript file that it will use. We'll call this chat worker. JS, and that's going to reside in the project. I'll make that in a second. Then we give it a name to reference the worker by. We'll just call it chat. And then we can specify true for a shared worker, false for a dedicated worker. And I'm not going to go into the benefits and, and uh, use cases for each of these types of workers. That's a more advanced topic, but there are definitely use cases. Chat, a lightweight chat like this is a good use case for a shared worker. So we'll save that. Next thing we need to do is make this chatworker.js file. So that will create a new file for us. Chatworker is going to have an onConnect uh, method. So we'll give that a function. And you will get an event that comes in as a parameter with the onConnect. Now right now I'm just going to do a debugger in there and we'll see uh, a first implementation because there's some things I want to show you. So that's the server side. We've got a basic, what's going to happen is on connection, uh, theoretically speaking, this debugger is going to, going to fire for me and we're going to be off to the races. But there's something that uh, needs to trigger that and that's going to be on the client side. So I'll go back to our index page. I'll just choose this button because I'm go going to be putting code in it later just to generate the uh, default uh, script for this page. I'll go up here into the uh, namespace area and I'm going to put a bit of code. So we'll make a variable ws for web server equals new or web socket, sorry, socket. And what we do is we pass in the address for this. So ws and then we'll, we'll do localhost uh, port 8081 is where this application is living and then chat and that will connect to our server and uh, start a web socket so let's start our solution and on this next page here what I've set up is um, two, two, two instances of Google Chrome uh, this is just so that I can show you what's what we're going to be doing is synchronizing data through this WebSocket server with two uh, browsers. They could be anywhere. I've got them here on my local machine. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to open it up to everyone on the webinar to jump on and we'll demonstrate this. Let's just go to our local host. This will be our application so you can see our interface. And you can see that the debugger opens. So we've got an on connect and we've got an event parameter. Within this event parameter, so this is again, it's a worker, but within this we have a ports object and within ports in array position zero, this is actually our web socket. So you'll see me use this in a second. So essentially what we've got is on connect. When we did the, when we loaded the page as we would expect it, set up the web socket and this is where we start. So there's the first step. Next place we're going to go is go back to our chat worker and we're going to create a reference to that WebSocket. So we'll go var WebSocket equals uh, event.ports0. That gives us a reference. So now in WS is our WebSocket. And I think the first thing we want to do is right here we have a new, a new connection or a new client. And the thing that I want to do is I want to set up 
a default username for them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, post a message. So the WebSocket post message. And we're going to post uh, some JSON data. So I'm going to do json.stringify. And what this will do is it's going to turn this object that I'm creating into valid JSON. We're going to stick to a standard uh, message format. I'll just put in a comment here. It'll be an object like this. First thing we'll pass, order doesn't matter, but we'll pass a username attribute. That will be whatever. Then we'll pass um, a type so we can categorize the type of message it is and act according to the type. And then we'll pass a body. And that will just be whatever contents we choose. It's, it'll be an arbitrary value. So we're going to, back here, we've got a web socket. We're going to post a message, and we're going to, going to stringify a message object. So we'll make a username, and let's just create one here, default user, and then we'll go plus math floor, and then... Um, math random so we'll do a random number between 1 and 1000 so that'll give us a default user and then some number between 1 and 1000 so that's our username then we'll do a type uh, add user that will just flag to us on the client side that this is an add user message and we can act accordingly and then the body we actually don't need in this case so let's save that I'm gonna now we go over to the client side so when you when you're developing like this you'll see regularly you're doing work on the server and then uh, addressing that work on the client you'll be bouncing back and forth and back and forth so we're gonna go to the client side and we're going to uh, work with our web socket uh, on message and this will get a function and we'll get a message parameter that will come to us from the server. So we've got non-message, and all I'm going to do is, again, do a debugger, and we'll take a look at what's happening there. I probably need to restart my solution at this point. I might even need to start server, but let's try this first. So if we go to our browser page, let's do a refresh. So here. We've got we've gone through the um, the server side, sorry. So we went through this chat worker, did the on connect, posted a message, and now on the client side we're getting the data from there. So what does message look like? Message is an object. When I expand it, the thing that we're interested in is this data. So this is JSON data from the server with you can see it was generated default user 151 now we can decide on the client side what we want to do with that so go back to studio to our client side JavaScript and I'm going to suggest the first thing we do is we make a new variable we'll do a message object equals JSON dot parse and what this is going to do is the reverse it's going to parse the JSON data into an object so message.data is what we want to parse so I'm going to get a JavaScript object with that data and that will give us access to those different um, uh, different uh, attributes of the object I'm going to set up a little bit of a, a structure here to handle different types of messages and I think in this case a switch makes sense so we'll do a switch and we'll switch on I've got a, an error here somewhere. It's warning me for something. Okay, so switch. Um, we're going to switch on message object dot type. No, oh, it went away. So, okay, so um, so we're going to switch on message object dot type in case it's uh, what did I call it? Uh, add user. So if it's an add user message, then we're going to do this. And what we want to do at this point is just go ahead and uh, I'm going to make a 
global or a, a variable at this level uh, username. Let's make it an empty string up there. But then in here in the add user, we're going to update that value. So a username equals message object dot username. And then we're going to make a reference to the uh, username uh, text input. And we're going to set value to username. Let's give this a try um, in the browser here. So if we refresh now, you can see that in the username, we've retrieved via WebSocket the default user 136 which was generated on the server so we now have data coming from the server to the client uh, via WebSocket we're getting up and running pretty pretty well here so back in uh, studio uh, what do we want to do next let's enable us to change our username so the first thing I would say we do I'm going to actually put a break here before I forget First thing we need to do, I think we'll work on the client side, and I already set up the spot where we can put our code for when someone clicks on the uh, username button to change it. And what we'll do is we will get a reference to that uh, username input dot get value, and we're going to assign that. We'll give uh, update username the variable with that and then we're going to push that to the server so websocket.send and again we're going to json.stringify and stringify an object that we're going to create right now first thing we want to do is uh, username is the variable username and then type we'll just do uh, update username and there we go I think that's all we need we don't need anything in the body so we'll go back to chatworker.js and we have our server-side script very similarly I'm going to stop the solution because we'll need to restart is we have an on message here so websocket dot on message this is going to be messages coming from the clients so it's uh, sorry, equals function, and we will get a message in as a parameter. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to do variable uh, message object equals um, json.parse. We're going to parse. It comes in the same way in message.data. So now we'll have our message object. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll do a switch on the server side. And we're going to switch um, message object dot type. And case it is, uh, what do we say? Update username. So case it's update username. Then we'll do this. So what do we want to do on the server side when we update the username? Well, this is where it gets more interesting, is I actually would like to, you notice that um, if I go back to the browser just to make a specific point, let's open up another client here. And you notice that basically one client is getting the message for that default user. Uh, but there's a different mechanism that we want is we want to be able to broadcast because this is a chat so maybe we have 15 or 20 people on this chat when a new user when someone modifies their name I think that's a good time for us to put some information in this team chat and update it across the browser so we'll set up the uh, basis to do that excuse me so there's a couple things we need here first outside of everything I'm going to make a new variable all web sockets. I'm going to make that an, an empty array. And this is going to track all the web sockets that are active. And again, the example I'm going to go through after this 
handles, uh, you know, keeping, uh, removing web sockets when they're gone and, and different scoping of who gets what messages, all these types of things. I'm just going to go carte blanche. Everyone gets the message. It's just a blatant broadcast. So let's also make uh, a broadcast function. And what we'll pass in is we're going to pass in actual JSON, um, actual pass in an object. So the first thing we want to do in broadcast is uh, um, let's do to send equals json.stringify msg. So we'll pass in a, a JavaScript object. It'll stringify it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, all web sockets. We're going to do a for each. Dot for each. So it's going to loop through each element in the web sockets array. And we'll just give it uh, web socket as the variable. So this is going to be each element as it loops through this array. And so when we get into each web socket, what we're going to do is web socket dot um, post message and we'll just uh, send the to send. So that's what broadcast does then is it takes a, an object, stringifies it into JSON, loops through each of all the web sockets and posts the message that we sent in. So it's going to be uh, essentially a broadcast. So that's what it should do. Back to our on message. So when we get a username update, Let's go ahead and broadcast some information. And what we'll broadcast, we want to pass in an object, uh, username. Let's just put in system so they know it comes from the system. Um, and then type will be user, or no, we'll do a type message because anything that's um, going to be put into the main text area of the chat. We're going to classify that type of message as message. And then we'll put body. Um, we'll do, so what are we doing here? So we've got update username. So uh, what can we put here? Um, so we've got message, message object. I believe we've got username. Let's put a string. A user has changed their name to plus the username. So what should happen here, I'm going to test it in a second, is we should go when the person clicks on the button in the client, we're going to send their username and type, so it's update username. Then it's going to go to the server. It's going to go to on message. It's going to say the type um, is update username. Then it's going to do broadcast this object, which sends username system, type message, and then a body. And that will go through the broadcast and send it to every client that has uh, opened up a connection. So uh, I hope that's clear. But now we need to, again, like I said, you jump back and forth. We'll jump back to the client side. And on the client side, we need to handle this new type of message. So we already have a switch set up. Let's do a new case. So case is it's a message. The type is message. So this is going to be messages that go into that main text area. Okay, so what do we want to do in this case? We want to, on a message, we want to post it into the text. So we'll go uh, first, previous will be the existing contents of the text. So we'll get a reference to the text, uh, chat text, I think it was, chat text dot get value. So we've stored the, the existing contents in the previous variable. And we will uh, update that uh, content. So uh, let's go 
chat text dot set value and we'll set the value to now we've got access to some styling so we'll do a bold and then we'll do plus we've got our message object still from that we built before message object dot username plus we'll close the bold um, and then we will put in plus um, message object dot body because if you look back at uh, the broadcast here we're passing in the body so that's the body of the message and then we will add a line return and then we will add previous so that's going to append it to the top make the username bold put in the body and then uh, tack on the previous uh, contents. So let's see if this worked for us. I'm going to start the solution again just in case I did something that required that. So we'll start it up. And I'm running Wakanda server locally for anyone who's uh, new to it. You can do it very easily. Just run it on your local machine. Um, and it's very agile way of developing. Okay, so We'll refresh here. We've got our default user. I'll refresh here. Let's change name to Greg. And it didn't work. What did I do wrong? All web sockets. Oh, right. Uh, one thing we need to do is uh, the on connect is we want to add um, var. Uh, sorry. We want to go like this all web sockets dot push. We want to put that WebSocket in there. Thanks, Brian. And that should work better. So now that's going to start updating the list of all WebSockets and this sh should work better. No guarantees though. This is part of the fun of live demonstrations. Let's give that a try. Dun, da, da. So you can see the other browser updated. Um, we're, we're good to go. So let's go a little bit further with this. Let's allow users to actually post messages. Okay, so where do we want to start? I'm thinking client side. Uh, we probably even want to go ahead grab this button and let's add an event to it. So an on click, give us a position to put our code. It's one of the nice things about Studio is it does a lot of scaffolding for you. It gives you good uh, good placement of your code out of the box if you're less experienced. Of course, if you're an experienced developer, you have free use of this code. You can set it up however you want. So in the send button, if you remember, we have a text input that uh, is ID message input. So we're going to go uh, reference that. This is how you get the value out of that input. So what are we going to do with this value? We're going to take the WebSocket. We're going to send. We're going to do JSON dot string if I going to stringify something. And I'm just keeping this, I'll put this, I'll cut this. Okay, so we're going to stringify an object. So what do we want to uh, send over the wire? First thing is we want a username. And that is this variable up here. I believe we've kept updated. We'll find out. So this will be username. Next attribute, we want to send the type. And this is a message. Sorry, passing a string. And then last is the body. 
and that's where we put the value that I just had. So we're going to stringify an object with uh, the current username, the type, and the body, and that's going to uh, go in the WebSocket send command. On the server side, we now need to uh, deal with this. be pretty easy. We've already got our switch set up here for different types of messages on the server. So just add a new case. This will be message. And um, so in the event that it's a message, we want to broadcast something different. <clears throat> so what do we want to broadcast here? Well, we send it an object. We know that. Username will be actually the uh, message object, which we have already, dot username, because we're going to broadcast who it was from. Um, then we'll broadcast the type is a message again. Sorry, that's in a string. And then the body will just be a message object dot body. We'll just send it as is. Um, and I think that should work. Let's restart. Okay, we'll refresh both of these. And let's make this Greg. They both get that message. Let's let Greg send a message. And you can see that Greg has sent the message, hello everyone. We can change the username here. Let's go, since Brian saved the day, let's put Brian in here, make him immortal. So uh, user has changed the name to Brian. And Brian gets the message and it's reflected back. Okay, so that's the end of this demonstration. Because of time, I'm not going to go further into. We can talk about how you would uh, imp make an implementation that works with data in the data store. You know, there's certainly ways that you could easily uh, put something in a non save event or a non, you know, when things are modified to send an alert to all the broadcast and alert that information has. Um, uh, Changed and then do a something like a uh, 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 sorry collection refresh is the command I'm thinking of, and that would update you know uh, check against and and keep this d data in in sync. So there's a lot of different ways you can work with this, but the main thing I wanted to point out is here's how you send JSON data back and forth in a dynamic way, push from the server, push from the client, uh, you name it. So let's do something a little more interesting. If you haven't seen ngrok before, I'd recommend it's great service. It's free at this point, and I think it always will have a free option. I'm going to open up my 8081 port. You can see here, anyone who's in the webinar, if you've got a browser free, go to this address. I'm going to put it in the global chat here. And go ahead and give it a try. Now this is going to be very much uh, it's off my home connection and it's certainly not uh, industrial grade but let's take a look so if I now go to that address take a second to load so this is actually being served off my machine that I'm doing the webinar on I'll do it over here as well It is rather slow. Hmm. Maybe I can only do one per machine. There we go. So if anyone's out there and you want to try it, it took a while to come up, but uh, now I'm working, and I bet you if you come on here, you will also see. So. Uh, feel free to mess around with that. I'll keep it up for the remainder of the webinar. Um, in fact, if you want to post a question, feel free to post it in there. But we do have, uh, I should say that 
We're going to be coming up to the question and answer section in a, in a minute. There is uh, questions uh, in the, um, the webinar software. That's the best place to put them, and we're going to work on answers. So you can go ahead and start posting any questions you have uh, in there. Uh, so Brian's saying that uh, that NGROC thing may not be working. Anyhow, uh, that's, uh, that's a side point. So let's go into something a little more advanced. I'm going to close out this example altogether. I'm going to post this to my GitHub. Actually, I'll do it right now. Uh, let's push to GitHub. Okay. Yes, I'll make a new repository. So I'll give you my GitHub. It's Mick Wakanda, but that should be up there uh, any moment. So let's close this um, solution. And let's go ahead and open one. I've got, so if we go to, let me go back to the slides here for a minute. <laughs> so, okay, I guess we should talk about this for a second. If you're looking for more advanced impl implementations, if you have a very high load and you're expecting a really popular site, there are different architectures than what I showed you. What I showed you was basically one worker which means that you're going to be uh, utilizing one core on the machine, uh, which for this use case is probably fine. Uh, but seeing as Wakanda is multi-threaded, if you're setting up a really robust uh, socket-focused system, you, you would likely set it up more similar to the second example here where you'd have a, uh, your uh, web socket worker routing uh, work requests to other workers and what that would do is that uh, those additional workers, you, probably dedicated workers, uh, would um, spread the load over multiple cores and that's how you would get even more performance. But as far as the advanced topics, I think probably WebSockets, if there's enough interest based on this webinar, would be a good candidate for uh, a more advanced um, session. But there's additional resources. First thing I should mention is this requires what's in the development branch right now. I believe it's going to be out for Wakanda 9. Uh, I should ask Ricardo for specific clarification that it will be in Wakanda 9, but it is in the dev branch right now. So everything I did was uh, development branch of Wakanda, which it went surprisingly smooth considering that. Uh, there's a ton of documentation on the wakanda.org site. Uh, I'm going to show you the downloadable example. It's uh, well, what I would call an intermediate level. Uh, but very, very much further than what I did here today. There's a ton of client-side resources. Remember, WebSockets are a standard, so you may connect to Wakanda with, uh, with the Wakanda front end. You may connect to it from a, a native mobile application. It really depends, but uh, there's a ton of resources for you know, browser-based WebSockets. And uh, like I said, I just posted this to my GitHub. You're welcome to, to use it and do whatever you like with it. This is just a quick screenshot of the documentation on the Wakanda site. We've got a ton of information, everything. I would say there's two, two topics you want to read up on with respect to this. Is um, You want to read up on WebSockets and workers. And you can see we've got a ton of information. Uh, this will be rounded out uh, as, as the feature matures and develops. But uh, right now you can figure it out on here, especially if you've done this review. Uh, to get yourself started. So we're going to go into questions right after I show you the other project. So this is the downloadable one that you can uh, get. It's called chat. It's in our documentation available for download. But you'll see a lot of the the guts are the same. Okay, Where you start with a bootstrap file. Uh, so we've got He's adding a, a WebSocket handler. Uh, the worker that they're using is chat server. And again, they're using a shared worker. In the chat server, you'll see that it's a lot better JavaScript in here. Uh, it's not just a quick hack like I was doing. But uh, sorry, the guts of it, where you see your starting point is down here at the bottom. There's your on connect. And I'd recommend, you know, really take a read through this. Uh, it's managing different rooms, it's managing chat, uh, it's doing a lot more than what I demonstrated and it's a great resource. Uh, I wish I, I knew the name of the person who did it off the top of my head, I'd love to give them credit for it, but uh, 
really appreciated that it helped me a lot to preparing this webinar. So let's go into questions. Um, if you have questions, we can put them. You can put them in the um, question uh, area. I'll wait for a couple minutes. We've got a couple questions. Um, when is Wakanda Nine going to be released? I don't have a uh, a specific release date, but I did get a comment here from the developer of the feature that it is going to be in Wakanda Nine. I would bet that you'll see Wakanda Nine go into a stabilization channel fairly soon. Uh, we do a regular release cycle. We're generally doing it quarterly, so it's not going to be a huge wait to have this feature in production-ready systems. Is it best practice to put all the server-side code in the OnConnect? No, I would say it's not best practice. You want to follow modular develop. You know, like modular uh, code is always a good idea. Um, in fact, you know, I use some globals. I would say the the example that I showed you with the download is a a better example. But even beyond that, I think this is a discussion that we really should have as a community: is start really discussing what are best practices and and help each other not only get better at developing with Wakanda, but uh, JavaScript in general. There's a lot of, and I think uh, one person I'd point out in particular, uh, Alexandre uh, Morgot, is uh, great for this type of thing. He's in the forum quite regularly, so if you have questions about best practices, he'd be the guy that uh, I would go to personally. Is there some type of back-end encryption going on? I don't believe so. But uh, you can set up, you can send binary data through these WebSockets as well. Uh, you'll see in the documentation there's a place where you can specify string or binary, or like binary, um, what you can send through the socket. So you could uh, do whatever you like as far as um, modifying the contents going across the wire. Uh, does the OnConnect event have access to the session object? I didn't test anything with logging in. I would think that definitely it would. I don't see why it wouldn't. So, um, but uh, be interested, Welsh, uh, test it out and let me know. I, I can't see you having any problem being able to uh, distinguish whether someone has a valid session and is authenticated. So I think we'll cut it off there. Again, I've got this uh, email address here. Any questions that you come up with, afterwards, by all means, send them through. Uh, we, will, uh, we will address them as best I can. And uh, so we got one last question here. Can you send pictures and audio? I think the idea of doing it with uh, binary data probably would cover what you need. Uh, what are the advantages of WebSockets over other means? Really, I think that's more a question of it's just an instantaneous way of pushing data from the, uh, from the server to the client. Uh, you know, it's uh, more. Most people feel it's a more responsive way of doing things. But again, there's there's a lot of different options. So always, um, always, uh, you know, evaluate your options. So we're going to end it there. Appreciate you coming online. We finished under an hour, which is great. I thought this one might go a little longer, and look forward to seeing what you'll do with WebSockets going forward.